No. Thank you so much, Mark. So I've often had so many different educators who point out to me over the years that I have a coaching conversation style. And I thought about it and I wondered, does it link to the fact that I'm a qualified coach? I've been qualified for about 10 years, but it also links to the fact that I love coaching conversations for the fact that it actually helps people. It helps me to develop others and it's, it's supportive. Now, you, before we actually explore what I mean by a coaching conversation I just want to show share a coaching definition I found and there are so many different co um, definitions but this one by Tim Timothy Galway I thought was really powerful because we're actually talking about l unlocking a person's potential and I've highlighted two aspects that link to the fact that coaching is empowering you have the role of facilitating and developing another person now if we link that to the coaching conversation definition we have this. And again, I've highlighted this particular aspect, reinforcing the fact that it's empowering. And there's, there are often two terms that are used to coaching or coaching conversations, the push and pull aspect. You do not have to be a qualified coach to undertake coaching conversations because what you are doing is actually <laughs> posing questions to find out and get the person to explore what the issue is they're trying to address and how they can actually undertake solutions for it. Now, whenever you decided to undertake coaching or coaching conversations, I think that's built upon the pillars of three aspects, trust. There has to be trust in there. And the fact that whatever is generally shared will not be shared beyond the conversation, unless it's obviously it's going to be of harm to someone or the person actually um, who's actually undertaking the conversation. There's time and space that's dedicated to it. There's no point in rushing this. The process takes as long as it actually needs to. And lastly, it has to be empowerment. If there's time, there's space, there's trust, but the person's not being empowered, all you're really doing is having a very nice conversation. But there's one other thing to also recognize as well. Not every conversation can be undertaken in a coaching with, with, as a coaching conversation. So you need to be able to recognize and spot when to undertake it. And these questions are cues as to maybe you can think, OK, I can actually provide time to help a person to explore solutions to what they're actually undercovering. I'm going to share three skills with you. And again, if you look online or you do some research, you'll find that there are a number of different examples that are shared, but I boiled them down to key, three key skills. Your listening skills are really, really key. And with the next slide, there are six different aspects that active listening skills cover. It means that you're paying attention, you're actually clarifying what you're hearing. Um, and with regards to sharing, when you, sh if you hear something that resonates with your own experiences that you've actually undertake, um, gone through, you can actually share how, you know, your experience, but it actually helps to build empathy. So again, it's not that so you're taking over the conversation, you're just being supportive. Asking questions is the second skill, but it's so key and one that I'm going to uncover a little bit more because you need to plan for this. Now, when we talk about questions, there are so many different types, as this slide particularly shares, but we're going to look at a, a couple of examples about how to do this in an effective way. So open questions, they basically mean that the person has to give more than a yes or no or one or two word response. And you're just getting them to explore what is the situation and how could they possibly create um, a way forward. Now, if you want to probe a little bit deeper, the probing questions will be more appropriate. So you can ask things. Can you tell me more? What do you have in mind? Really digging deep. Now, by doing this, you are getting the person to think from different, different perspectives and really um, clarify what the, the, their intention is and what they're actually trying to address. Or you could have a combination of different questions through the uh, funnel questions effect. You start with the open questions, dig deep into the probing questions, and you can actually end with closed questions. For example, how likely are you to commit to the strategies you want to implement? So this highlights the fact that closed questions aren't bad. It's about using it when it's appropriate. And a third skill is this avoid imposing. Do not impose your opinions, your thoughts, what they should actually do, because it's not about you. The coaching conversation is about empowering the person that you are supporting. And this is an important part of leadership. So just to summarize, if you have a coaching conversation, there are three elements about the listening, responding and asking the appropriate questions and, the, and trying to hold back from imposing your own ideas.
Now I'm sharing this particular slide because part of today's Teach Meet, not only we're going to be having learning that's being shared, laughter and things like that, there'll be prizes. Um, and one of the prizes will be me offering my service as a coach for one session. And if you want to explore more about the coaching conversations, about some of the strategies, or if you have these to get in touch with me because you actually won my service as a prize, then you can do so using the uh, social media uh, details I've actually shared or via email. So thank you very much, everyone. And I hope you understood why I love coaching conversations. Thank you. <laughs>